Welcome to Pavenars, webinars for the pavement community. My name is Andrew Bram, and today we're going to talk about reading a journal article. I understand that it is intimidating to start reading journal articles. They're very dense, they have a lot of information, and they're not really written in a reader-friendly way most of the time. So this is intended to help you start to break down journal articles to get the information you need out of them. But I do recommend before reading a single word, ask yourself some very pointed questions. First, what are you looking for in this article? This is a very broad question and can be broken down into several sub questions. For example, what do you already know about the subject? What gaps need to be filled on the subject? What knowledge needs to be expanded on the subject? And within this subject, are there controversial points? Are there differences of opinion that need to be corroborated? So these are all different types of questions you can ask and how you approach reading the journal article will depend greatly on what type of information you're looking from it. I also recommend that you never try and read a journal article from the beginning to the end. So don't just start on the very first page, the very first word, and start reading through it. And this is for two reasons. First, less than half the articles that you find will be of actual use. And you can find out very quickly if they're useful or not by going through them in a certain way. Another issue is you'll often put yourself to sleep, and that's because a lot of journal articles are front-end loaded with a very dense literature review. And sometimes it's a very difficult hill to climb up and over in order to get to the new information in the journal article. So I, I recommend that you not just simply try and read it from beginning to end. Now that you've answered some of these questions, what you're reflecting on, and you kind of have a general strategy in place, where do we start to find articles? Well, these are the journals that we should be reading. The American Society of Civil Engineering, ASCE, has three journals that have pavement materials and pavement design, pavement structures. The Journal of Materials and Civil Engineering, the Journal of Testing and Evaluation, and the Journal of Transportation Engineering Part B Pavements. For asphalt materials, I highly recommend you take a look at the Association of Asphalt Paving Technologists Proceedings. They have a wealth of information. CBM, Construction and Building Materials, is a very popular journal in our field. The International Journal of Pavement Engineering and materials and structures both have articles and pavements, pavement materials, pavement design, pavement structures. And then finally, road material and pavement design and transportation research record. And some people refer to transportation research record as TRB. Transportation Research Board is the conference name. Transportation Research Record is the journal associated with TRB. And of course, there are many others that you'll find good articles in, but I feel that if you hit these journals up, you will find 90 to 95% of what you need and what you're looking for. And sometimes also, you can just do a Google, Google search and see what pops up, uh, because often you can find some interesting items there as well. So these are just the journals. Another way to approach finding information is to use search engines. And one of the best out there in our area is the Transport Research International Documentation, or TRID database. And this is a phenomenal database. And if you simply Google TRID, TRID, or Transport Research International Documentation, it'll pop right up, trid.trb.org. The nice thing about this search engine is it has a lot of state and agency reports in the search results, as well as journal articles. So there's a lot of good information, a lot of good work that's been done out there on local and state levels, and this database has a lot of that. So very, very nice database. 
if you're at a university, you probably have access to the search engine engineering village. This is a little more on the science side, the technical side, but engineering village is an excellent resource to find articles on your journal topic. Also, if you're in a research group and you're working on a topic that's similar to another graduate students, I recommend that you take a look at their literature review. Now, I do not condone plagiarism. You should not cut and paste anything. However, you also don't need to completely reinvent the wheel. I encourage you to read other students' literature review and understand it and start asking questions like, where are the holes? What sort of additional information do we need? And you can build on those previous students' literature reviews. So again, you should not cut and paste content directly from other students' work, but you can certainly leverage the articles that they have found before really digging into your own search journey. And finally, one of the best places to find articles is in articles themselves. Take a look at the references and mine those references for further details. And something that's interested when you start doing this exercise is you can start working your way back in time. So let's say you're writing a journal article, uh, it's 2021 right now, and the majority of articles you're looking at are, you know, published around 2010 to 2015. If you look at those references, the majority of references were probably published in about 2000 to 2005, because there's a little bit of lag about articles getting actually published from when they were submitted. And then so on and so forth, so you can kind of work your way back in time. Now, I was kind of fortunate when I went through graduate school because we didn't have a lot of these tools. And of course, it's nice to have these tools, but there are literally thousands of articles out there that you can read on different subjects on asphalt concrete, asphalt materials, Portland cement concrete, Portland cement concrete materials, structural design, maintenance, rehabilitation, pavement management systems. There are thousands of articles, maybe even tens of thousands of articles. How on earth do you try and get through them all? The first step I take is always note the authors, because the more you read, the more you will recognize. And what you'll do is you will learn established and respected research groups, because the established and respected research groups are the ones that are referenced time and time and time again. And this can actually help with finding more articles because if you actually start searching for both a topic and an author at the same time, you can find a lot of very high quality information in a very short period of time. So after you've kind of noted the authors, this is how I recommend reading a journal paper. First, you start with the abstract. Then you look at the pictures, and who doesn't like looking at pictures? So take a look at those figures and tables. If you're still interested, move on to the introduction and conclusion, and then you finish up with the materials and methods and the results and discussions. And it's my opinion that if you read a journal article in this sequence, it will be a much more rewarding and a re enriching experience. So let's briefly go through each one of these steps. When you're reading the abstract, if you do not understand a portion of the abstract, take a look at the full paper. Just quickly dig into there and see if you can find what they're talking about in that full paper. If you still can't understand what they're trying to say, I don't recommend reading that paper because if you can't understand the abstract alone, chances are the paper itself it will not be a very high quality. Now, you can always come back to it if you find out that it is a necessary paper to read, but when you're sitting there with a thousand papers to read, this is a relatively easy way to cull the top of the papers off. If you can't read and understand the abstract, chances are the paper is not a tremendously high value. However, if you do read and understand the abstract and you think that this will be a paper that's important to you, like I said, take a look at the pictures, take a look at those figures and tables. By looking at the figures and tables, you can very quickly determine the variables and the trends that the authors have used and have established. 
So you kind of get an idea of the materials and methods just by looking at the fixtures. If you see a graph that has four different asphalt mixtures and it's a dynamic modulus graph, chances are you just found the four different materials they used and one of the tests that they used. Now you may need to read the legends, the captions, and a little bit of the surrounding text to understand the figure, but a well-written figure and a well-written table should in general be standalone, and you shouldn't need to reference a whole lot of the text around it. Now maybe if you're not quite familiar with one of the tests that they're running or one of the materials that they're using, you might need to quickly reference the methods and experimental design section. But after reading the abstract and looking at the figures and tables, you should have a very strong understanding of the overall findings and a decent understanding of the materials and methods. So literally just reading the abstract and just looking at the figures and tables, you have a very good idea of the paper's content, the findings, the tests they ran, and the materials they looked at. After reading the abstract and taking a look at the figures and tables, I recommend that you take a look at the introduction. This can also be called maybe the background. But some things to look for are, does the author know the field? Sometimes it's pretty amazing when you start reading the introduction and you find out that the author is making several statements that may not completely be true or may be going down the wrong track. However, you can find nuggets of good information in any introduction or background section. You may find some work that's been referenced that you're not familiar with. And by the time you get through this introduction or background section, the objectives of the research should be crystal clear. You should have a very good idea of what the intent of the authors were when publishing this paper. Now, if you do find unfamiliar references, I don't recommend you immediately download those and immediately start reading them. I would recommend setting up a spreadsheet or some sort of list and just add it to that list, maybe at the high, medium, or low priority, and just make it a note for your next round of articles to read. After you've read the introduction, I recommend you read the conclusion because a well-written conclusion should reiterate the knowledge gained in the abstract, the figures and tables, and the introduction. So it'll kind of reinforce everything that you've already read. Now, it is my opinion that if you're still interested in this paper, this paper is a winner. Uh, they wrote a great abstract. They had high quality figures and tables. They have a robust introduction and conclusion. I would say go ahead and finish it off. Read through the whole paper because you'll get a full understanding of the sequence of work. So go ahead and dig into the materials and methods. This will validate and expand on the knowledge you already gained by looking at the um, figures and tables. And then you can read the results and discussion because the results and discussion will be a lot more applicable because you'll already understand so much of what the authors are going after. And it'll really come alive, the content in this section. Now, another nice thing about reading through a, a well-written paper is it'll start opening up lines of questionings that you can use for your research. Did the authors bring up additional points or did they not bring up additional points that should have been brought up? So as you were reading through, did you ask yourself a question and you found that the authors never addressed that? That is something that you could perhaps fold into your research. Or was there a contradiction in findings? Did you read a paper just before that had a different perspective than this paper? Maybe an optimal percentage of recycled asphalt pavement or reclaimed asphalt pavement. Maybe a different percentage of fly ash in your Portland cement concrete to get optimal performance. These are things that we don't necessarily have firm answers to. So if you find articles with contradictions between different articles, that is an excellent opportunity for future research. Now I do ask you to consider one final question while you're doing all of this, and that is how can you improve your writing while reading others' work? Again, you should never cut and paste things directly. That is plagiarism and that is not appropriate for peer-reviewed journal publications or any sort of publications. But you can 
say, what did this author do to make it easy to read? Was it the structure? Was it the way they presented the information? And you can take those structures and those concepts and you can incorporate them into your writing and the way that you present information. Because if you read 10 different articles and find one good thing that you liked out of each one of those articles, you'll start developing your own writing style. And because you've taken ideas from easy to read, easy to understand, and high quality existing authors, that means that you're on track to become a high quality author yourself. So I, this is a lot to ask. I recognize that because in general, when we read journal articles, we're looking for technical content. We're looking for information in order to um, further our work that we're doing. But I ask yourself, I ask you to create a parallel track, and that's always asking the question, how can you improve your writing while reading others' work? So in summary, when reading a journal article, I recommend you first read the abstract, then took a look at the figures and tables, read the introduction and conclusion, and then continue on with the materials and methods and the results and discussion. So I'm very excited that you decided to watch this presentation, so thank you. And I encourage you to enjoy reading your journal articles. It's a lot of fun, so happy reading as well.